Hello everyone, I'm all about Sonic and Telltale Gamer, being related to everything Telltale Games, Transformers, and more. For today's review, we're going to be looking at Transformers Robots in the Skies Combiner Force Episode 6, Be Cool. Now, definitely after the more mediocre episodes of Blurred and, um, Sphere of Influence, this episode is a really nice breath of fresh air, and it is definitely, in my opinion, probably one of the best episodes of this Combiner Force so far. Um, now, it does have its faults, but they are very, very minuscule ones. I think, honestly, this is one of the best episodes of the season so far. Let's go ahead and go over everything this episode did right and what it did wrong. So let's go over the first pro this episode, and that is the antagonist of this episode. So finally, we get more info on Motormaster Stenticon team, where prior to this, we've only saw Heatseeker and Motormaster in the season premiere of King of the Hill. This time, we get two more of the Stenticons, Dragstip and Wildbreak, who are certainly the, a very, very entertaining pair. Now, obviously, the Transformers fandom, for obvious reasons, has been calling Wildbreak the un, the unofficial son of Breakdown and Knockout, and I can certainly see that he's got... He's got Breakdown's colors down to a T, he's got Knockout's Van Vane personality, um, and even a very similar line to him, Breakdown's G1 um, personality as well, and it's, I gotta say, I really, really love um, Wild Break, he's such a funny character, basically, and it seems to, it's always like funny when having Drag Sprip constantly mess with Wild Break and all like, the little shenanigans they get into, like, um, especially when um, Drag Strip and Wild Break are breaking into Windblade's cache to, um, get um all her supplies and the septicon hunter it's really funny when um drag strip ends up um uh trying to open a case only to have um its security systems freeze him and then wild break like insults him and then it leads to um drag strip being around up wild break and i think it's hilarious um anyways this leads into um the main plot of this episode in which um bumblebee and the rest of the team are out trying to um while they're not trying to catch wild break and Drag strip. They're actually um, heading to the same cache in order to um, find a replacement for Bumblebee Septicon Hunter, which was lost by um, Rumble in back in Cane Hill Part Two. So they're ending up going to the the cache when they and run into Drax and Wildbreak. We get this. They end up um, fighting um, and chasing them all throughout Crown City, and then eventually, thanks to um, Grimlock and Strongarm, they block box them into the city, forcing them to fight inside this car parking lot. And this leads to probably the best fight of the season this far, and it's um, Bumblebee, Drift, Sideswipe, and Blur versus Wild Break and Drag Strip, um, who combine into the Septicon, um, I think, Drag Break? Yeah, it's Drag Break, and so, which is obviously the fusion of Drag Strip and Wild Break. Now, this is ends up to be a really cool fight in which um, Drag Strip ends up using the, um, the Septicon Hunter they found in, as a sledgehammer and absolutely wrecks Bumblebee and um, Sideswipe. Um, however, thanks to um, some assistance from Blur and... Um, Drift, um, Bumblebee is able to, to, um, able to take him down by outmaneuvering him and such, and they end up getting away with, um, the Decepticon Hunter. However, it self-destructs, and that gives, um, Dragstrip and Wildbreak time to escape and attention and appear in future episodes. Another pro about this episode is the way, um, Blur and Sideswipe's relationship is handled. Now, um, this, um, last time we saw Blur and Sideswipe really interact was in Blur's introduction episode, Blurred. And we gotta see, while they, their interactions episode are very brief, it does give a point to nice picture of um, how the two get along with each other. Now, this is something I really wish they did back in Blurred, but instead it was just Sideswipe constantly being annoyed by Blur and feeling that he was gonna be replaced by Blur. And it, it really felt out of character for Sideswipe, and I'm glad to see that Hasbro decided to fix that with this episode. We definitely see, it definitely reminds me a lot more of when Sideswipe appeared in Rescue Bots, and he and Blur got along really well in that episode, and it, it really shows off here, and they, they work off each other real, like, especially when, um, Drag Strip and Wild Break first, um, combine into Drag Break, um, Bumblebee and Drift have a lot of trouble, but Blur and, Blur and Sites have actually do deal with him, um, are able to hold him off for quite a while before he ends up over, pow um, Drag Strip Break ends up over empowering them, and I think that's a really great team dynamic that we got between Blur and I and mean, hope we see that more with other characters throughout the season. Now we're gonna get into the one slight skill con about this episode, and that is basically whole Bumblebee's, um, problem throughout this entire episode, hence the name Be Cool. Basically, the whole episode is the fact that, um, it starts off with, um, Bumblebee, um, watching Sideswipe and Blur, um, go through, um, doing a training exercise, and it's really just, um, Sideswipe um, making Blur do his chores, and basically, he, um, he seems kind of jealous of Sideswipe and Blur 
getting along so well, and he thinks that maybe they th that they don't think Bumblebee is that cool anymore. And it really it basically is, th this episode I could call this Bumblebee has a midlife crisis. Basically, this is what this episode is. So basically, it's all Bumblebee doing like all this slang talking, about, and it's like very it's at some point it's very very cringy, but at other times it's really really funny. So that's why it's kind of a con slash pro in which. It's very out of character, I think, for Bumblebee, who seems to always be this really proud person, doesn't really care what others think of him. He never really had that um, aspect of him in the previous episode, in the past seasons, so it just kind of pops out of nowhere, but at the same point, it's so hilarious that you can't really um, put that much of a con onto it. The only really time it really annoyed me was towards the end of the episode when, um, uh, during the final fight between the B team and um, Drag Break, in which um, Bumblebee ends up trying to. Um, impress uh, Sideswipe and Blur by taking on Dragbert Hill, only to get absolutely wrecked and nearly fall to his death had it not been for Drift and Blur saving him. And so then eventually he gets over this, uh, thanks to a little hard to with Drift, he's able to go stop doing this and then um, go through, um, defeat, um, drag straight, um, drag break. Oh, and then Blur leaves. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, why did they get rid of Blur? I mean, this is, I mean, I, I understand that they, he has to go back, but I mean, like, Rescue Bots is already finished, and although it's been leaked that apparently a new, um, there, a sequel series to Rescue Bots is on the way called Rescue Bots Academy, I can understand why they want to have Blur back in that, but it's just that I feel like Blur worked so well in Robots in the Skies more than he did in Rescue Bots. To me, it felt like just Blur was so out of place for Rescue Bots, and that's why I was so happy to see him in Robots in the Skies. He was my favorite character in Rescue Bots. I was really excited to see more of him in the Skies, only to have him just say, Oh, I gotta go back to Heat Wave, so I'll see you guys later. Um, so yeah, assuming this Rescue by the Academy series is truly in the works, that's where we'll see Blur. Otherwise, I feel like, I, I don't think he's gonna be able to pull a Windblade and come back later. Um, I really think this is the last we see of Blur, and it is kind of sad, but... And, and that's not really a concept, so you can't really blame the writers for that. So I'm, that's just a personal con for me. That's nothing wrong with this episode. I'm just sad that Blur's gone. You will be missed. And so that was my review of Transformers Robots in the Skies Combiner Force Episode 6, Be Cool. If I had to rate this episode, I would probably give it a 9.5 out of 10. This episode was near perfect. I love Drag Strip and Wild Break. Bumblebee's, um, bam, Midlife Crisis was funny, but at the sometimes cringy. And the whole final fight at the end with Drag Break was epic. The only thing being, once again, that Bumblebee, once again, Bumblebee's Midlife Crisis and that Blur left. So that's going to be for this episode. I'll be back soon with episode 7, The Great Divide. If you like this review, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.